Let's talk about exocytosis. And what this is, it's basically a type of vesicular transport. From the Golgi apparatus to the plasma membrane. Let's draw a picture of it. This is a simplified trans-Golgi apparatus. Trans-Golgi. It has the double membrane. I only drew one line. It really has two. Let's draw a vesicle budding off of it. That's the dashed line. So this is budding. Here's the vesicle. And let's draw some cargo in that vesicle. Let's make it a uh, receptor. So my receptor is blue. Here's the binding site of the receptor. And here is the cytosolic component with this little red X. So in here is the cytosol. Here's the lumen of the trans-Golgi apparatus. Lumen. Here's the lumen of the vesicle. And let's draw the receptor in the vesicle. Okay, so picture just kind of getting sucked into the vesicle. And it's important to look at the orientation of the receptor. You want to keep the same things in the same place. And what I mean by that is I have the part of the receptor that's facing the cytosol right here is still facing the cytosol when it's over here. And that can be referred to as topological equivalence. And that means it's the same layout or orientation. Orientation. Okay. So now let's have this vesicle mature as it after it buds. What happens next? Well, now it's in the cytosol. Let's draw again that receptor to make things clear here. Okay, we still have the same part in the cytosol, the same part in the lumen. Moving on. It's going to have to dock and fuse with the plasma membrane at some point. So here's the plasma membrane. I'm a little zoomed in, this isn't drawn to scale. Here's the vesicle, just fusing. The dash line, fusion. Let's draw again the receptor. I think it might be more clear to draw it in the back. You can picture it just kind of rotating, diffusing over here. Let's mark again the cytosolic. This stays cytosolic the whole time. And now we can see what would happen if the receptor is in the plasma membrane after fusion has occurred. receptors like this. We wanted this to be facing the extracellular space. And this part of the receptor is still facing the cytosol. Let's talk about 
how the vesicle actually gets to the plasma membrane. And it does that with help from the cytoskeleton. And here are some microtubules. MT. And they're polar, so one end indicated by the plus and the minus end is where it's nucleated. That's where the microtubule starts. And this is where it ends. And we need a plus end directed microtubule motor protein such as kinesin. I'll just draw a little circle here with legs. It's kinesin. And that's going to basically pull the vesicle towards the plus end, allowing it to move to the plasma membrane. And it does that by nucleotide hydrolysis. Let's talk about the components of the vesicle. One really important one is called clathrin. And that's a protein like a cage it surrounds the vesicle. It's a protein. And it helps with specificity. It helps interact with the proteins that are loaded into the vesicle. So it's also here, and it's also here. One thing you should know about code proteins, though, is that they will be shed during fusion. You don't get the coat proteins incorporated into the plasma membrane. They just break off into the cytosol. Another thing that's on the vesicle is a phosphoinositide. And that's there in addition to the regular phospholipids in the vesicle membrane. So this is phosphoinositide. Four. That's just the particular one that's in there. There's different phosphoinositides pips for different areas of membrane in the cell. And there's also going to be some adapter proteins that help interact with the cargo. That's yellow. Okay. So. adapter proteins. So all this stuff, these two guys, these two guys, they're going to help with specificity. What that means is getting the right cargo into the vesicle and also making sure that the vesicle gets to the right location. So cargo and location. 